Hi, this screencast is going to walk through the recently updated user interface and user experience for the web form module for Drupal 8. This screencast is tied to a blog post called the Wow vs. Aha related to the web form module's user interface and user experience. I'll explain that more as we go through the podcast. Hi, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. What's the problem? Well, Fancy user interfaces can provide a lot of wow. Cool looking things, drag and drop, and you know, little fade in, fade out. And this can also distract and or limit an application's overall functionality and capabilities because you're putting this fancy user interface in front of all the configuration settings, possibilities of the application. And in the web form modules, this the specific challenge is there's lots of configuration settings. There's 80 plus form elements. Everything is customizable. A and in relation to open source, you know, WYSIWYG is hard to build and maintain. And it requires a front end framework, which is a big decision on what front end framework to use to build a drag and drop user interface for building forms. And personally, I feel like the front end frameworks need to come from core, and core needs to make decisions on how they want to handle the user interface. For in relation to the administration of a Drupal website. So, so what's the solution I'm, I'm kind of proposing? Well, focus on features, configurability, and flexibility while providing more aha moments for site builders and developers. And aha to me is just this experience as you're working through the module, you can gradually peel away all the features and functionalities and learn how it works and build amazing forms for your site users. And you know, the solution that I'm kind of working towards is, you know, support anything, show everything. I'm definitely providing element previews because if you have 80 plus elements, you have to show them. And using tabs more for settings and properties, I'm separating out the builder from the settings, and you're going to have to see that as I just start showing you the UI. And just make it easier to extend and customize the overall, the web form module. And I'm just going to demo some of it to you. So this is a clean install. And I'm going to go over to the settings. I'm going to start high level and then drill down to show you the features and functionalities that have recently been added. And this is what I'm talking about tabs, where I broke the whole admin section out into tabs, which have smaller sets of features and functionality. And you can click through and see this is just general settings for forms. You can click through to elements and see all the settings for elements. And you can go through and see all your options. And what this also does is introduce people to the general IA or how the web form module works where you're building uh, and I'm gonna this is like a lot to digest when I say it it starts to roll off my tongue where we're building forms that consist of elements elements have options and these forms then generate submissions which have handlers and the handlers you know can route that data and then you also have exports so you can export the data and overall all this stuff requires the libraries to enhance the forms and the elements and then of course you always have to have advanced where you could just bucket everything and I'm actually going to jump over to advanced before I show you you know so we've talked about the tabs and I want to show you the previous version to show you what the problem was was this was the admin setting so every tab I just showed you was nested in this one page and right now it seems comprehensible when you expand all you get this massive form of every single setting on one page it is completely overwhelming it is actually overwhelming to maintain, which is why I broke this down into these individual tabs. And to help me, so now I'm going to jump to kind of just help, to help maintain these tabs and make them simpler. I also added these help icons, which I'm going to show you how they work. And what it's doing is moving the element description over into this tooltip. And to show you the before, I can actually uncheck. So this way to uncheck it, and I scroll down. And you get a sense of what it previously looked like, which this seems a lot Pretty cluttered with a lot of text. What's good about turning it off is it makes it easier to do editorial reviews of the overall module because you don't have to, I don't want to roll over every tooltip to see all the text. I'm going to turn it back on so we can go through the user experience. And you can see how much cleaner it is. And I can now kind of focus on the, these labels and clean them up, make them slightly more verbose, and put more information inside the tooltips. I'm going to jump up to the module and I'm going to go over here. And we're going to start with our classic contact form. And this is where I changed edit to build. And the reason I did that is now when you click on build, it goes to the same place, but it's you're building the form. You're building the elements. And then you can see the source in the same tab. And this is a very clean, this is one task. You're building the form. 
elements. That's it. And then if you jump over to settings, which I'm going to do because, the, by the way, nothing's changed in the functionality. This is the user interface and experience. So this is all the same features and functionality. But now I've broken this down further so that you can see your general settings, your form, your submission. Very important is I pulled confirmation up because that's what most people do when they build forms is they tweak the confirmation page. And this gives you the ability to get right to it and make adjustments to the confirmation settings. Everything else people are pretty familiar with. You know, these tabs were previously there and I can actually show you the previous one if we go over. Um, let's see, we go over to the form and see it says edit. And now you see all these tabs here. It's only five tabs and now I've broken down into, added two more tabs for basically form, submission, and confirmations to split it up. So you're starting to see I'm taking these tabs and breaking things up and trying to get patterns that make sense, like a flow to these tabs where people, as they come through, you're going to have to click through every tab to understand what's going on. But it should help you, once you get familiar with the patterns, to quickly edit your forms. Now I'm going to also go into the form. I'm going to do my classic demo, which is add an element. I'm going to click add element. I'm going to click show preview. And that's also a new feature that was recently added where it shows you a preview of every element that you can possibly add. Most people will turn this on and off. It gives you an idea of how it works. And there are examples as well, but it just shows you all the elements before you do it. And for my demo, I always like to add a text field. I'm going to add company. And well, let's do your company. Jump, jump ahead a little bit because we don't need to talk about source. And you see these tool tips are here or I call them help text, and I'm going to add help text to this element because this feature is also available for your forms that you're building for your end users. And I can scroll down, and you're going to see there's less settings on this page because I broke this down into tabs as well. And the, the four tabs kind of break down the general functionality how people think. This is general form element settings, so you can set up your display, how the form element is going to be displayed. And I'm also using two-column layout to compress the form a little. I'm going to keep doing that as I move through the... The module keeps iterating into a release candidate. And then you got your form validation settings. And then conditions have been moved over to a dedicated tab. And I'm going to add a condition that I'm going to say it's visible when the name is entered and it's filled. And then there's an advanced setting, which is really a lot of display settings that you can add. And most people don't tend to add these. So I decided to move them over into an advanced tab. And finally, access controls is just always moved over into a dedicated tab. I think people are just familiar with that pattern, and it helps. And I'm going to hit Save. And one other feature is there's now a conditional tab. This kind of goes back to that aha moment, because this shows you everything that's going on with your form. And I think it's important. Like Now you can click through and be like, OK, this is going to be visible. Click through and see the condition that you're using to trigger it. And I want to also emphasize the source mode is really nice because it shows you exactly what's going on for developers that build forms in Drupal. This is completely readable information. They've used form API and they can see it. And I'm going to jump over and give you the quick demo of the form. And you'll see the little tooltip is available. And this is styled through jQuery UI and you can tweak it any way you want. And that's pretty much the demo of the, the recent updates to the UI. And I, um, what I feel like to describe right now is the flow is very good, and we're going to keep cleaning up the help text, some of the elements, and try to make it a little cleaner. But I think these, these tabs are going to definitely be a key aspect of the user experience for the Web4 module. Um, keep going forward. So, so what's next? Um, it's getting to a re release candidate. It's fixing bugs. Clean up the UI and UX. It's, it's like auditing, making sure things make sense, the labels make sense. I've got to review and audit all the code, make sure it's maintainable, and, and finalize the APIs. And there is a roadmap available, and there'll probably be a dedicated ticket for the audit so that people can pay attention to what's going on. It's going to take some time because the Web4 module's got a lot of code, but I definitely want a very stable release candidate so that people can really start using it and feel comfortable that it's going to work as they expect. And to end, you know, how can I help you with WebForms and Drupal 8? Uh, I'm a consultant. I'm available for training support. We can work together to build a feature. If you need help succeeding in your project, just contact me. jrockwoods.com, jrockwoods at drupal.org. And I just want to say thanks for watching and listening. Take care.